after lots of trial and error, finally got a Flux node running within a Linux container on my Proxmox server. So here we are on the primary node. We can see this right here is our Flux CT. That's our container that we are running Flux in. Right here, we can see that we've got our Flux node running, running, it's passing benchmarks. I haven't hit start yet in Zellcorp. And under Flux nodes within Zellcorp, we can see that we've got our second node here ready to hit start. So why would we want to do this? Well, one, we're crazy. Two, Linux containers can take a lot less, a lot less, a little bit less overhead than a Linux VM. The idea is we can run this in a container and save a little bit of the virtual resources to utilize for other VMs or containers or other services that we want to run within our server. So let's just go through and do this together now. I'm going to go ahead and we are going to stop this VM, CT204, and we're going to go in and build a brand new container and set this up from start to finish. As always, I will leave links down in the description for any kind of articles or walkthroughs and documentation that you might need for this process. Starting off in the Flux Run on Flux wiki, there is this page, which is required for permissions to be set correctly for your Linux LXC container to run a Flux node. First things first, we actually have to go in and edit this before we even build a new virtual machine. So I've already done this. I'm gonna go ahead and show you this anyway. So we go back to our primary Proxmox node that your container is going to live on. We're gonna hit shell and we've got our shell here. You can do this in, in putty as well, whatever you're most comfortable with. This line right here is actually what we're gonna run. Yours is probably gonna look different from mine, but this is the line that you're looking for. It'll say grub command line Linux default equals, and then it'll probably just say quiet here in parentheses. You need to add this max loop equals 255 after whatever is in the parentheses here. If there's nothing in the parentheses, just add max loop. I don't know what they do, but it works. Anyway, then you hit control X to save. It'll ask you if you wanna save, yes. And it'll ask you if you wanna name it and just name it exactly what it was, just hit enter. So after you've modified the max loop under that config line, execute this update dash grub. You would type reboot and it's going to reboot your entire Proxmox server. This is gonna take a couple of minutes. While you're waiting for this to come back up, this next piece here, going to add additional loops in the config file for your Linux container, which is gonna be required for it to work. I'm not sure what all these commands do, but this is how I got it to work. You're gonna to want to open a notepad, copy all of this all the way down to here. Just do a copy and paste, just like I have here. Now comes the fun part. It essentially extend this loop line all the way down to loop 99 and then put in the last line. No spaces, no nothing. And just save that because you're gonna need it a little bit later. And now our Proxmox server is back up. Our next steps, as we're here on our node, we're gonna hit create CT. You can name your container ID, whatever you like. I'm gonna make it 205. 200s are my containers, 100s are my VMs. Flux CT, I'm gonna name it CT2 since I already have one. This is the important part, don't forget to do this. You're gonna click unprivileged container, Un uncheck that, because by default it's an unprivileged container. Put in your super secret password. We can see as we're making our node here, we're going to need our template. You can get these templates um, let's see, local local VM. So we'll come to CT templates. We can click templates. We can search for whatever we want. I know 2004 works. We would just hit download. It would download the template and then it would be listed here in your list of templates. So back here, we are gonna select our Ubuntu 20. Where are we gonna put our storage? I'm working on a Cumulus node, so we need at least 220 gigs of storage for CPU, eight gigs of RAM. IPv6 will leave 
DHCP. Um, you're gonna choose your own uh, IP address and make it a slash 24, and then your gateway, which is typically the IP of your router. DNS will leave alone. Go through and check all this, make sure it's correct. Hit finish. And it's done. It's done that quick. We can see we've got our Flux CT2 here. All right, before we boot this up and really get into it, our next steps in order to fix our permissions. Remember, we created this before. Now's when we're going to need it. We're going to come into the primary Proxmox node. We're going to hit Shell again. And we're going to type this. Here at the end where it says uh, xxxx.conf, you're going to put the number of the the container you just made. So in our case, we're going to do 205. So just 205.conf. This is what you're going to see typical just specs of the container. Come down past all of this, come back to your notepad that you created here, highlight all of it, all the way down to here. Don't worry about this. This was an error message I was getting. No spaces, no nothing just right after that very last line, put that in here. Control X to exit. It's gonna ask you to save, hit yes, and then just hit enter to rename it the same. Now that we have updated our config file for the VM, might as well reboot the server again. While that's rebooting, back here on this permission fix document, at the very bottom of the document, it says save the file, back up the CT, delete the CT, restore the CT from the backup with privileged options and start the CT. If you've already gone through this process and created the container, this is where this might come into play. That being said, I've done this multiple times now. By doing a backup and restore, it was never able to restore to the point where I could use the container and it would never pass a benchmark. Essentially do all of this before you create your container. Do this up front. That's the important part. Make sure it's a privileged container from the start. All right, it looks like our server is back up. It's a good time to go ahead and stake your, whatever your requirement is for the node that you're running over in Zelcor. And it's pretty easy to do. You just gotta send yourself a thousand Flux. I go through that a little bit deeper in the how to set up a Flux node on Hyper-V video that I did, and I'll leave that up here somewhere. I'll also leave a link to that video in the description. We've got our Flux staked. That means that we've got our Flux node private keys and our collateral ID and all of that stuff already generated within Zellcore that we're gonna need later on down the line. This is a good time to say if you've learned anything so far, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel. Appreciate it. We are gonna go ahead and console into our container and hit start. Our login ID is root and then the super secret password. First thing is first, we need to go through and update and upgrade the node. We just wanna get our container to the most current state. All right, we've got our update and we've got our upgrade done. Now we need to install curl and NPM. So we'll get install curl dash Y. There we go. And then we'll do pm-y. We're going to go through and just do each step one by one by one until it's all set up and done. Hey, that rhymed. Oh my gosh, this takes so long. Eventually. And we're finally done there. So we're going to put in our bash command, which brings us to the multi toolbox. We'll hit one to install Docker, uh, enter your username, or this is going to be the name that you entered for your flux node over in Zellcore when you set that up. Mine is goat CT, put in your super secure password. You'll probably want to make it different than your main password just because security. There you go. Docker is installed. Would you like to switch to user account? Yes. Uh, we're going to hit paste again of our multi toolbox. We'll hit two to install flux node you got to put in your super secure password you just made and it's going to go through and install the things for your flux node while this is doing the installation go ahead over to zelcore and sign back in because you've probably been timed out by now now your flux node identity key is generated by zelcore so you're going to want to go into flux under zelcore go to details go to your flux node that you created in a previous step the one that you're working on now hit edit and here's your information so we'll hit identity key and we'll paste, hit enter, your collateral transaction number, paste, the output index number, which is a zero for us, and your Zell ID, which you're going to go back to apps, 
your Zell ID, click the, the QR code, and then paste and enter. Node tier eligible to receive KDA reward. Back to portfolio, go into our Cadena wallet, hit receive, and then under whichever wallet you want, you will want to grab the wallet string that has the K in front of it. Paste it here and hit OK. So now it's going to go through and install your benchmark tool and things. It's going to pop up and ask you about the bootstrap. Just hit enter to download from the source build. If you have another one, you're probably not watching this video anyway. So we'll let this do its thing and we'll come back. Later. All right, so we've gone through and we have let it auto install Bootstrap and all the settings and everything. So we've come to this screen asking if you'd like to enable auto update. This is up to you. I'm going to enable auto update because I want it to just run and do its thing and have as little interference that's required of me to, you know, keep it running and stuff. Some people, especially if you're running multiple nodes, may not want to enable auto update. That's up to you. So I'm going to hit yes. I do not want to enable alert notifications notifications. Now it's going to go back into this installation mode of installing Flux. Uh. And we're back. Says installation completed. So this goes through and gives you some commands. This one we're going to do Flux Bench dash CLI space get benchmarks. Benchmark tool is running. We'll let it do its thing. Now is the point where if this is your second node like me, you're going to want to come into here. You'll go for number 14 and multi-node configuration with UPnP communication needs a router with UPnP support. You should already have gone into your specific router and enabled UPnP. You're going to go through and select one of these Flux OS ports. I've actually gone through and selected a lot of these ports before. So we're going to pick one that I don't think we've used before. We'll find out. Is this your router's IP address? Yes. And now it's going to go through and do its thing. And we'll come back when it's all done. Run the benchmark. Make sure that it passes with flying colors. And we'll be good to go. The next evening. We're at the point where it's all said and done. All we have to do now is confirm that it's set up correctly and that it passes. And then we can go into Zellcore and hit start. And we're done. We're going to go ahead and type in flux bench dash CLI space get benchmarks. And we can see that it's passed. If you get any error messages, it'll pop up here. And this is what will tell you if your flux node did not meet, meet the benchmarks and what is causing it to error out and fail. From here, we would just go into Zellcore under our flux nodes pick the node that we have and hit start. I'm not gonna do that here because I'm actually gonna use a different container that I have. Well, that's it guys. This is how you set up a Flux node within a Linux container using Proxmox server. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. If you got this far in the video, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm gonna have more videos like this coming out as well as check out some of these other videos that are already ready already for you. And of course, thanks for watching.